Hello crafters, I'm Jan B and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator. Today I'd like to show you how I made this berry basket and the little penguin. I've made both of them using the corrugated paper. We have um, white and craft in the catalogue and as you can see by the penguin's main body um, I've painted mine black. So I want to show you how I've done that. Um, the berry basket is really very very easy but I'm going to show you how to get a nice sturdy basket like this rather than a really soft squidgy one like this. It's all to do with the direction of your paper. So the cardstock you're going to need for this project, you're going to need two pieces of the craft corrugated paper that measures five inches by eight and a quarter and this is the important part you must make sure that your stripes are coming down so you've got five inches across the top and you've got all your stripes coming all the way down the eight and a quarter inches okay you will also need two pieces of the white corrugated paper that measure two inches by two and a quarter inches and then you need another two pieces that are two inches by one and a half inch. You will need a scrap of basic black and a few scraps of whisper white. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp the bow tie because I need that for the uh, when I'm using the big shot so I can cut the baskets and the tie in one go I won't need to keep getting the basket the um, big shot up now I'm using marina mist for this right now that I've have that I'm going to bring my big shot up I may have to stand up to do this bit but I am using our um, berry basket bigs L die I'm putting it onto one cutting mat I'm going to put my first piece on and it's important that you have your um, bumpy bits upright, your corrugated side upright. Um, the reason is because there are uh, fold marks, score lines on here and you, you can see them a lot better if you've cut on that side. The other thing I recommend is that you try and make sure this is as straight as possible because you can cut the bits off of the remnants and use them on different projects. Um, finally, the other thing that I recommend is that you put a piece of paper, scrap paper, over the top. It just keeps it a little bit nicer when you put your other cutting mat on. Because of all these cut marks on here, it protects against that, um, causing any problems on your sheet. Right, now I'm going to just run this through. I might have, to, oh no, it's going to go. It's going to say I might have to stand up to do this. There we go. So that's all been cut through that off to that side and we do the second piece making sure it's as straight as possible and another piece of paper over the top and put that on come on are you going to go through for me I'm going to have to stand up. Excuse me. I just need to 
Come on. I'm trying to make a video here, don't mess about. Oh, there we go. off in a moment. But I just want to cut the bow out. So I'll get rid of that and bring the magnetic board over and retrieve my cutting mat that's fallen on the floor. Right now then I'm using the little die. By the way the stamp set I'm using is called snow place um, so it's a penguin that I'm using and also the little bow tie and it has a set of dies that go with it which is called snow friends flame framelits so I'm just going to put this on here over there. I'll put this back down on the floor and then I can sit down again. Right, first of all we'll do the bow tie. Oops, so that, that one there. And bring these pieces of the basket over. So you get two scalloped pieces and two pieces of the basket which just has little pop outs there and you also get a straight piece okay so there should be two of those and then that's the other basket the other side of the basket rather okay so that's those two now what I do keep is as long as this is straight along here, and you can check it by whether the line's gone along or not, I save that. And I also save this one here because that's straight, and these will be brilliant for little trims on other cards. And I keep this one as well. The corrugated part I used on the card that I posted to my blog today and it I did um, cupcakes and it just added a nice little bit to um, my card. Okay, I'll finish those off later um, but that was just an idea for you. Oops, don't want to get rid of that. Right, now to put the berry basket together I'm going to use my silicone mat. I actually found one of them. Now this is what I mean. At the back here you can see these fold lines really nice and cl clearly. Um, I'm not going to be using the straight bit yet. I'm using the scalloped bits around the top. So all you need to do is just very gently fold that over. I don't score it. Um, um, not score it burnish it. I made a gift bag with it last week and for some reason the edges all split. I don't know why but it's made me very cautious of how I handle these. Now I'm going to use um, Tombow for gluing these two together. So I'm going to go to the edges go close to the edges, not right to the edges. And then I'm going to put the other one on top 
but as I'm doing it I'm going to make sure it's fitting together properly so that both sides come up like that okay so those two sides are up those two sides are up and that one's a bit too far down And turn that over to make sure that it is stuck down nice and firmly. Now I'm going to put these on and on the back here you'll see there's score marks again. Okay there's one there and there's one there. Okay so just fold those on both pieces. Now the way this fits onto the basket, I'll show you, there is one scallop that comes off the edge of the main body. Okay, both sides, one scallop that you don't need to glue. Let's put that there. So what I do is to remind myself so that I don't start putting glue in the wrong places, I do one line of glue there, one line of glue there. So I've got my clear scallop, clear scallop, and then I know that I just need my glue in between. And I do do this one part at a time. I think it would be too much of a fight to try and get both bits done. You know, if I'm trying to do this at the same time. Right, now that I've done that, I've made sure that I've got my scallop here and here and now I'm going to turn it round to make sure that this is right at the top so all I can see from the top here are my horizontal lines I can't see any of the vertical lines underneath there okay now I'm going to do this side and again from this fold mark there's going to be one spare scallop it's not going to be glued and also there's one spare one from this fold mark okay then I'm going to bring this one up line it so that I've got one spare scallop that end one this end and then I'm going to turn it around to make sure that I've got got it right from here okay so now I'm going to do the other side same again leave one spare scallop that end one spare that end and then glue in the middle Okay, so bring this one up, line up the spare and the spare that side, turn it around, make sure that's all nice and straight and then for the last side, okay that's the fold, so that's going to be the spare scallop, that's the fold, that's going to be spare and we have the glue in the middle. And then bring this up. When I'm doing this second one, I find it easier to keep my finger on here. It does have a tendency to want to come up, but it is quite easy to keep it where you want it to be. Okay so that's fine. Now what we're going to do is this piece here we're going to put glue on here and then we're going to stick it at the back there. Now at this stage you will need something to hold it in place and I've got some pegs here that I use so I'm going to put the glue on there
put it on there just hold it for four or five seconds give it a chance to grip and then when you're happy just put that on to hold it in place and then do the other side bring that round hold it in place for a count of four or five seconds Tombow does dry clear so if you have some oozing out like I have here don't worry too much about it that will be fine now for the handle what I'm going to do is using a pencil and holding on to that score line there okay I don't want to do my pencil along that bit I only want to do this part the same for this side hold that part and then just do here and then you'll find you'll be able to get your handle on okay now again I'm going to put some Tombow on here just about half an inch I'm going to line this up with this third slit here if you're doing it like this you can see where you're going and you can see that's lining up and you can also tell whether you're going in a straight line or not and then that's gone down a bit too far let's bring it up a bit see this is the beauty of Tombow you do have a bit of wiggle time so that one's all done I'm going to put another half an inch of glue here and then I'm going to line this up with the third hole here again Let's see if I can do it sideways okay making sure that my lines are straight otherwise my handle is going to be wonky that's it, that looks good. That's another peg. There we go. So that's a basket made, nice and secure. Now I'm going to put that to one side while we do the penguin. Um, I don't need that at the moment, but what I do need is a scrap of paper and I didn't die cut the penguins did I okay so we'll get the big shot back again this is what I was trying to avoid but never mind okay so I'm using one of my pieces of paper and I'm using the penguin die and I've got my lines going across ways and I'm putting a piece of paper on top before I push this through the big shot of paper back on again his toes off never mind so 
So let's move this out of the way now. Now for the sake of time, I'm only going to decorate one of the penguins. I will do the other one afterwards. So the first thing I need to do is to paint this black. There's two ways you can do it. One, you can use your dauber with your ink pad or you can use your black marker pen. I'm going to use my marker pen and one thing that I will say about this is try not to move your penguin too much because you're getting black onto your scrap paper and the more black you get if you move your penguin you're going to be picking up the black on the back of him. It won't be a massive amount but it may be you know something that you'd rather didn't happen. Okay so just a quick paint over like this and this is absolutely brilliant because whatever marker pens you've got you can colour your corrugated paper. I haven't experimented with this with the um, craft, what that looks like, but I will do one day. And I'll post it on my blog to let you know how I get on. Right, now what we do is we paint in these lines. Okay. Now I have to say, this doesn't really do the tip of your marker pen much good. Um, in fact, it definitely is bad for, your, for the tip. If you don't want to do this, what you can do is use one of these very fine tip Letraset pens. We do journal pens in 0.1 and 0.5 and their tips are so much harder it's better to do this. It's just that I've done so many of these now my pens are drying out so I'm going to persevere with my marker pen. Plus in fact I think it's quicker. Mind you, I shouldn't be complaining about my marker pens. I've had them for four years, so they have done remarkably well. If you want to keep your fingers clean, you can just hold on to your piece of work with a piece of kitchen towel or any kind of tissue you have in your craft room. And then once you've done all of this, you've done all your grooves chances are you're going to be finishing up with some areas that are still white around the edges. And what I tend to do with those is just go and paint them like that. Okay. There we go. So that's him done. Now what we need to do 
for his body, his white body, is if you take one of the smaller pieces and the penguin stamp and your black archival ink and you just need to stamp this on the back not on the corrugated side but on the plain side and just make sure you get all of the body on let me just bring this down to me so that I can make sure I'm getting on the paper okay so that's Oops, that's that bit. And what I also need to stamp is I need eyes and, no, not his eyes, I need his nose and his feet. So I'll turn this around the other way. Okay, so ink him up again. I'll put that so that I know I'm going to get his nose, his feet rather, and then his feet can come down here. and these will just be fussy cut out. Okay, so got the feet, got that. Now what I'm going to do is first of all, I'm going to take my scissors and cut out the body. Now I do this and I try and leave just a tiny, tiny little part of the black on it. It doesn't matter if you don't because it's going straight on to the complete back black. But I just think it's a nice shape and size to leave that bit on. As I said earlier, I don't like thin looking penguins. They should be a nice cuddly size. Okay, so that bit's done. I'm going to use my Tombow to stick him onto this part. Okay, so I'm putting my glue on the flat part of it, the flat backing. So that stamping all gets covered up. Oops, no, I haven't done. The really important bit and that's that bit there that is what makes him look like a penguin so I just cut that little bit out right okay let's just put a little bit more glue back on there Okay, so he starts looking something like a penguin now. Now for his feet and his nose, I'm going to colour those with my pumpkin pie marker pen. Bearing in mind that I do two of these, I have one penguin on the back and one on the front. Okay, so that's all that done, that's not what I want. with the feet is if you cut one but don't cut it off the body just yet okay 
okay so just go down to the next one it's just that when you're cutting such small pieces it really gives you something to hold on to okay so now you've got that it's quite easy just to cut around there and then round there Okay, so I've got that, that, that. I'll just pop all that over there and sort that out afterwards. So with the beak, that looks like I put rather a lot on there, doesn't it? So let's put some there. Okay, so that's his beak. And then with his feet, and the easy thing to remember about the feet, which one goes on which, is if it has two lines on it, and I'll show you what I mean, um, two lines on it means it goes on to the left foot. Let's just dab that off. Okay, so on here, you see you've got three lines on there. So that's the right foot. Okay, so it comes down here. And then this one has got two lines on it. That right, keeps still. <laughs> I'm not sure you can actually see that two lines, can you? But trust me, when you're doing it, you will see it. There's a little bit of white there. So I'm just going to take my black marker and colour that. Right, now for his eyes, I'm using the Owl Builder Punch. I'm using those two little small dots there. And then I'm going to use the, put his blue bow tie on. Right, the reason I'm doing blue this time, because this is my fourth basket that I'm doing. And as soon as his bow is on, I'll show you why. On my desk, my desk here, I have one of these, let me show you the catalogue, it's too big for me to bring it over to the camera. I have one of these, the um, ink caddy, the colour caddy. On the top here there's um, a little tray that's in four sections um, for you to store your ink refills. Well on mine I've got um, overflow ink pads here because I've got other units here for them. Um, but the baskets fit really nicely into here. So I'm going to have four. They're all going to be with penguins, but they've got different colour bow ties, so I'll know which, whatever it is that I want. I mean, for example, one of them's going to be bows that I've made for projects but not actually used them. So I will know that the red one's the one that's got the bows in it. Right, now what I'm going to do to adhere him, I know that I need to put the glue by where his arms come down. You see what I mean about getting ink on the back here? But that's okay because that bit in particular is going to be covered up anyway. But in fact there's a little bit of ink up here as well. Which is what I'm saying to you about being careful. It's not a lot but if it's the kind of thing that bothers you 
then you need to be a bit careful. Now where I'm going to put this, I'm going to put the bottom of his flippers just above the scallops. Okay, just in the centre there. That's it. And there is my basket. I am really so pleased with these. Over Christmas what I'll be doing is I'll be using them and have little sweets in them or things like that and have them lying around on different shelves. So there's the yellow one, there's the blue one and if you'd like to see what a white one looks like I haven't decorated it properly, I've just put these three flowers on as a temporary measure but that's what white looks like which I think is rather lovely. That I'm going to decorate properly and put it on my dressing table. So there you go, what a lovely project that is. I hope you like it. Many thanks for watching my video. If you have any questions, please ask. I'm always very happy to help. If you've enjoyed my video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button, which is probably at the right hand side of your screen, although depending on what you're watching this on, it may be underneath. If you'd like to purchase any of the Stamping Up products that I featured here, please click on the link that's showing at the bottom of your screen and that'll take you straight to my 24-7 online Stamping Up shop. Many thanks for joining me today. Until next time, happy crafting. Cheerio!